You know me, I, I'm wanting to crank on that thing, you know, heading that field. And he couldn't make up his mind whether he wanted to go left or go right. He went left. I went right, and then he went left, and I went a little bit left. And, it's just, and I ran up over his tire, you know, and uh, it shot me off the trail. I went into the back of this uh, F-150 pickup truck. The tailgate was down. I, I thought it was going to knock my head back, but luckily um, my front end, my front bumper, it, it soaked it up. Shout out Factory 4-3, they're tough, but I'm just super bummed, man. Um, I felt like I had this one today. I looked at my girlfriend and I said, I, I really think I'm done. I said, something's not right. I can't move my legs straight out. It's locked in the position. Can't put no weight on it. I said, I really think this is it. I, I really do. Um, I was able to get my surgery scheduled the Friday before the next race. So um, the next morning, uh, while everyone was taking off racing, I was starting my road to recovery. And uh, it was a long, long road. And, and um, that started immediately because I immediately knew, you know, the Saturday morning watching that race after I got out of surgery and I was watching the online race that this is what I wanted to do. I was on a podcast this past winter and uh, the gentleman brought up, he said, well, last year was a, a complete bust for you, more or less, that I lost out. and. You know, I reflected on that because I really don't think I lost out at all. Yeah, I wasn't at the races, but um, being at home and being, you know, out of out of the, the, the scene and not being at the races and competing, um, it really gave me a new perspective. And uh, mentally, I grew so much stronger. Um, it made me tougher. You know, the talks to join Magna One, it, it actually started last September. We already knew in September which route we was going to go, you know, before the season even came to an end. Um, you know, Chris Landers, we've worked with him before uh, in 2019. Chris has evolved in, into a full bore race team and um, he's doing one heck of a job with that. And um, it was just honestly super easy, you know. Uh, we both kind of was thinking of each other and we hit each other up in a sense. It wasn't more one part or the other. We kind of arrived at the same destination at the same time. We've known Bryson for uh, five years now. And then this year, off season, Late last year in this off season, we connected back with, with, with Bryson. Uh, we've always been connected, good family, uh, always been connected and make, making that happen. And <clears throat> so in the off season, we got, got that going. Going into 2022 is uh, the seriousness. You know, everyone who comes and shows up at race day, you know, it has a Magna One shirt, you know, they're 100% for me. And it's so nice knowing that, you know, people have my back no matter what. You know, last year at this time of John Penton, you know, I, my ACL was torn and I had a, a lateral torn meniscus bucket handle tear. And, um, you know, I spent about six weeks, you know, on crutches, not being able to walk, not really putting no weight on it. And uh, Stu Baylor, you know, fellow moose rider, he actually put me in connection with the guy who helped him through his total knee replacement, Ben Greenwood. He's from Australia. Um, Off-road performance coach is his uh, Instagram and his business that he runs through and um, it changed my life. You know, Ben has brought so many things to the table. Um, he gave me the foundation, the strength, the guidance to, you know, be in here in this gym. And, um, you know, all summer long, he has just progressed from baby steps of barely putting weight and barely squatting with my own body weight, you know, at, at a grandpa's pace to a full bore athlete, you know, doing squats and deadlifts, you know, beyond any any weight that I ever put up before, you know, in this year. So uh, he built me up from the ground up. I always have such respect for, you know, Stu for putting me in connection with Ben and uh, Ben for helping me, you know, get my legs back under me, get me sturdy. And uh, it, it was a good thing that last year when I got hurt, it was technically it was a good time to get hurt, I guess you could say. There's so many things that went into that first win back uh, at Big Buck at, at round number one. You know, um, going into it, it's like, man, I just want to get a podium. I really didn't know what to expect. I, I didn't ride with any of my competitors throughout the winter. It was, a, it was a heck of a battle, you know, all the way down to the finish. You know, I got walked with two miles to go, and the storybook finish, you know, honestly, looking back, that you can't 
wish for something better to happen for you that, you know, your first race back after your season ending injury to come back and win your first race. I was, I was absolutely just ecstatic on cloud nine and, um, you know, just thankful, appreciative, you know, the whole nine yards. Um, since round number one, I've came home and every week I've gotten faster, stronger, better. Uh, camp poker around um, number five, it was, you know, fever pitch at that point. You know, I won the race previous. We knew going into it that Walker was going to be really, really strong. I got off to an okay start. I got in the second place, he had a 30 second gap. And I was like, okay, like there's only one way to go, that's forward. I passed him, he passed me, you know, back and forth so many times throughout the race. But the highlight of it was the one during the pit stop where I was the very first one coming into the pit. I didn't have to go all the way down to the straight stretch at the end. I was able to, you know, get in first. Dad got me in and out. He was able to make the pass in the pits. That was huge. But then he actually got me back on the motocross track. So I was thinking in my head like, man, like I, I really don't have that many places picked out. And um, we came to the pine section where I passed him one previous time earlier in the race. And he took a line to the left up in the woods. I stayed railing the line that I've been hitting all day. And um, I was able to make the pass with about two miles to go. Put my head down, sprint, and uh, man, barn burner of a finish, but was able to come out on top that day. I'd say that the biggest thing that surprised me this year is um, how every race, you know, out of six races, Walker, Fowler, and me have found each other and had good battles every race. You know, um, six races, six battles, and um, it's, it's uh, you know, so much work that goes into us from both our parts. And, uh, you know, for GNCC Racing, for the fans, for everyone watching, everyone is telling me that how much they love the racing. Yeah, uh, going into John Penton 2022, you know, we're being the one year anniversary of me getting hurt. It was so awesome to uh, pull off the win and um, bring it home that weekend. I had a lot of family and friends come out and, you know, my mom and my sister, they don't make it out to many races. They were there. That was special to me. So, you know, a lot of family, a lot of friends and uh, to, to pull off the win. And I believe I made it four wins in a row with that, that as well. So um, we had a lot of momentum going our way and then uh, looking past that race. Um, we just wanted to keep going forward and see what we could do. Going to the Burr Oak, you know, the, the previous two races, we didn't have the best showing snowshoe. We had a DNF, and then uh, when we got back to racing after the long summer break at Beckley, you know, we, we came out with a thirds. Championship coming down to the wire, um, my home track, you know, all my family, friends, everything on the line. So, you know, my mindset coming to the Burr Oak was that this is it. This is, this is what's gonna make or break me. Uh, we started out the day with a great start. We went to the woods second. I uh, was able to make the pass on Hunter and lead and we was able to maintain all day long and just lead the race. And, and um, we couldn't ask for a better, for a better start and a better finish. When we was coming into that field section, I knew that that was the last possible place I could make a pass because the woods it, were super, super tight that day. The track was awesome. You know, the dirt was, was hero dirt, but the, the woods really didn't allow for much passing. And um, he had about an eight, 10 second gap of about the nine mile mark, about a mile before we reached the field. And I was able to close that distance just before we popped out in the field. And I still wasn't on him in it. But the last two corners in the field, we made it happen. We made it stick outside, inside, momentum, ran up alongside of him. And we just kind of aimed straight for the pole and just held our line. And I think we had about two or three minutes from there to the finish line. It was just all about just hitting our marks, being smooth, and, and just keeping that thing pinned. So pumped to bring it home on that one. Mindset coming in the Ironman Raceway, you know, yeah, this is um, a big weekend for us. You know, we're looking to try to close out a championship, but we're just trying to come into it. That's just another race. You know, it's just another day. We ain't changed any approach. Um, that in the last two weeks, we haven't done anything different. It's been the same, same training, same plan, same everything. So uh, we're just trying to treat it like another day and just, just focus on getting this job done, get it finished. Present to you 
these number one plates, Bryce and Neil. <laughs> You know, coming back from the injury last year and what happened, it definitely does make this year's success that we have had up to date more sweet. It does for sure. You know, uh, whenever you're not at the races, you know, anyone, all the dirt bike guys, anyone's ever got hurt before, they can all attest that when you're not here, you get forgotten about really quick when you're not showing up to the races. You're only as good as your last race, the famous saying goes, and to, to come back and be able to have as great as years what we have, it's, it's, it's definitely sweet for sure we'll celebrate we'll have fun but then most likely it'll be back to the grindstone and get everything situated and ready for 2023 and i'm a worker you know my dad was a worker and if i'm not doing something i don't feel like i'm i don't feel right i don't feel like i got my place in the world or i'm not doing my job so i'd say one of the 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 lessons of life that taught me it's a it's a little cliche you know but you're not always on top you're not always on the mountain looking down. You know, a lot of the time you're in the valley and uh, the world, it's cold. And if you really want something and, and you position yourself with people around you who, who care and, and want your best intentions, then you can do really good things. And uh, I'm just fortunate enough to have really, really great people around me. You know, sponsors, the whole Moose family, Parts Unlimited, Chris, Magna One, my, you know, my team, everyone. And uh, with a great, group of people around you, you, you can almost accomplish anything.